Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Lusaka Baptist Children's Ministry. I'm glad you've been able to join us today. And we are thankful to God that we are here today to be able to learn from his word. Last week, Auntie Joyce did a wonderful job revising through the I Am sayings of the Lord. Today, however, we are moving from the I Am sayings of the Lord and we'll be looking at so a very interesting story but before we do that let us pray lord our dear heavenly father we come before you to thank you that you have given us another day to come and sit at your feet and listen to your word heavenly father we pray that our hearts will be open to listen to your word our hearts will be open to receive the teaching for today. Heavenly Father, we ask this through your mighty name, Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, so I said, today we're going to look at the conversion of Saul. I love teaching the story of Saul. Not only is it a dramatic story, but it is a wonderful story and tells us of how God is able to change anybody's life. He can change a person from being proud to a person who is very humble. And that is what happened with Saul. Before we go any further, let us read scripture and see how the story unfolds. Today we are reading from the book of Acts and we'll read from Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. And it reads, Then so, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, So, so, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. There is the story of Saul. This Saul that we're talking about, who was he? Saul was known as Saul of Tarsus because he was born in the city of Tarsus. Growing up, like you, he would go to the synagogue just like you come to church. But Saul would sit down, listen, as he would receive teachings in the synagogue. He learned about the law. And as he learned about the law, he was very clever, just like you are to memorize the law of the Lord. I'll tell you something. When we are in class, the time we used to meet before COVID-19 hit us and we were taught to stay, from, to stay home and learn from home, every time I asked the question, how many of you know the Ten Commandments? I would have everybody's hand go up. Not a single day did I have anybody miss explaining or listing out the Ten Commandments for me. That is how Saul was. He knew the law and he would recite the law. Clever he was. But knowing the law did not make Paul a Christian. And we have to know that, like you and me, even if we know the law, 
but we do not have Jesus Christ in our hearts, if our hearts have not been changed, we are not Christians. So, as we look at source conversion, we have to also understand what does the word conversion mean? Conversion means a change. That is how simple we are going to put it. A change of heart. In this case, we're looking at how Saul's heart was changed by God from a man who was proud to a man who was humble. And we have to understand that conversion or change is the most important change that can happen in anybody's life. Now let us see the story unfold. Dramatic as it may be, we have to keep in mind that we are interested in learning how God is able to change anybody's heart. Everybody that you see standing up the pulpit and preaching to you, we're not born like that. We have been taught that we are born sinners. That is what scripture says. So Paul, being young, he sat in the synagogue and learned the word. And he learned the law of the Jews. We see that Saul was proud of being a Jew. You know, the Jewish were very proud that they were Jews because they believed that they were an elite tribe. They believed that even God, if he was to come back, and if he comes back, he was going to come only for the Jews. They did not even want to consider that even the Gentiles, being human, were equal to them. So Saul was very proud of being a Jew. Apart from being proud of being a Jew, Saul was also proud of the law. Because Saul knew the law, he thought that by knowing the law and just following the law, that was enough for him. But like every sinner, like everyone who does not know Christ as their personal savior, we all have a feeling at that time when we are not converted, that as long as I can say the Ten Commandments, as long as I'm found in the house of the Lord every Sunday, as long as I sit and listen to God's word, I'm a Christian. Even now, even if you have not given your life to Christ, and I was to ask you, so, are you a Christian? Most of you would say, yes, 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 I'm a Christian. But that's not what it is. Something has to happen in your life for you to be called a Christian. So we learn. The second thing that made so proud was that he knew the law. Thirdly, Saul was proud of the religious rituals. You know that at that time, people believed in sacrifices and um, he knew the sacrifices that had to be given for forgiveness. He knew sacrifices that had to be given even for thanksgiving. And he was a proud man because he knew that growing up, he knew the commandments, he knew the law and what it said. He knew that he was a Jew. Which was, an, which was a tribe that was elite. He knew that he knew all the rituals and he felt proud of that. He was convinced that he was walking right. But then, what Saul did not know at that time was that knowing all that made him no better than any sinner. And every time Saul heard people preaching about the word of God, the true God, when Christians who were converted would preach about Jesus Christ being the savior, he used to get very angry. He used to get angry to the point that even if he saw a Christian being killed, 
it didn't move him. In fact, he celebrated when Christians were killed. He celebrated when Christians were being persecuted. And that is what happens if you are not a Christian. That is what happens if you are still living in sin. So, much as he was not converted, he was a righteous person. Righteous, I mean, not that he was converted or he was a Christian. He just used to do what was right, what he believed was right. He was following everything that the law said. But little did he know that without Christ in his heart, without him receiving Christ, there is no way he could have done that with a clean heart. So, one day, so being who he was, being a proud Jew, being proud of the law, being a person who was proud of all the ceremonies, when he saw a Christian stand up and preach the word of God as we should know it, as it is written in the scriptures, in the Bible, when he heard the preaching that Christ was the sacrifice, was the ultimate sacrifice, he said to himself, no, 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 no. These people cannot be preaching about the ultimate sacrifice. I know that we do sacrifices. We have to sacrifice animals for God to forgive our sins. We have to sacrifice animals if we have to say thank you to God. And he was very uncomfortable. He was very infiltrated when he heard Stephen preaching to the point that when Stephen was being stoned to death, he stood there and I bet you, because he was not converted, in his heart he thought people by stoning Stephen were doing the right thing. But then, even as Stephen was being stoned and he was dying for the sake of the gospel, Saul so still decided, no, 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 this is not going to continue. I want to go to Damascus so that I can go and have all the Christians there bound up and put into prison. Now let us see what happens when Saul started off going to Damascus. So one day, with a few people, Saul started off going to Damascus. As they were moving to Damascus, um, I don't know what they were talking about, probably making plans on how they were going to bound Christians and throw them into jail, into prison. Something happened. Something unusual happened. A bright light shone around him. A very bright light. A light even brighter than the sun, if you look at it. To the point that Saul became blind. He became blind and he fell to the ground because he could not see. As he was on the ground, he heard a loud voice. And this voice, we heard it and we read it in the book of Acts. We are reading back Acts chapter 9 and we'll start only at verse 4 this time. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, So, so, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Did you hear that? Falling to the ground, he said and answered, who are you, Lord? Before he even knew, in his heart who the Lord Jesus Christ was, when he fell to the ground, it brought him to a, real, to a realization that that must be somebody greater than I am who is speaking to me. And he said, Lord, Lord, who are you that is speaking to me? 
So the story goes on. Saul was blind for three days. Another Christian by the name of Ananias took him and he stayed with him. In those three days that he was blind, he took time to speak to God. And that is the point at which Saul knew that the way he had known God, the way he had known um, religion was totally different from what he was supposed to know. At that point, Saul's heart was changed. Saul became converted. Remember the word conversion and what it means. It means a change of heart. Because of what Saul went through, Saul became converted. Saul's heart got changed. Just like you and me, even if we live in sin today, we have to know that Christ came and died for our sins. And because Christ came and died for our sins, Christ could not have come to die for our sins if we were perfect. If all it needed was for us to read the Bible and not have him play a role to convict our hearts and change our hearts. We need Christ to intervene in our lives so that our lives can be changed. Knowing the Ten Commandments, knowing the law, does not guarantee us to be Christians. Here, we are going to see what happened after Saul got converted, after Saul's heart changed from being proud to being something else. When Saul's heart changed from being proud to being something else, Saul became a person totally different from who he was. And I bet you, when this change happened in his, in his life, a lot of people around him must have questioned. They were asking questions probably. Hmm, is this the soul that we knew? The soul that was going around killing Christians? But that's what God's amazing love can do even for us. Today, you can be a bully. You come to church, you know the Ten Commandments, you know the law, but you are still a bully at school. People know you as a ringleader to the point that every time anybody in school hears that somebody is being bullied, they even know it is that person. And yet here at church, you come every Sunday or in your homes, as you are listening today, you listen to the word of God. And yet you know the law. That alone, knowing the Ten Commandments, knowing what the Bible says alone, cannot make you a person who obeys the commandments. Because God has to play a role. God has to intervene in your life for you to be a changed person. This is what happened to Saul when he got converted. He had to admit that he was broken, that he was a sinner, and that he had broken all of God's law, and he needed forgiveness from God. That shouldn't have been easy. I can just imagine that it should have been difficult even for him to admit that he had broken the law, a person who knew the law. Not only did he admit that he had broken God's law, every one of God's law, he also had to admit that everything that he did, every good deed that he did was absolutely nothing. It meant nothing but 
it was like filthy rags. You can imagine. You do good deeds. You are able to share things that are given to you. You are able to help out. And yet God is out there telling you, every good deed, as long as you are not converted, as long as you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, your deeds are like this filthy rag. Paul, as he became later known, after his conversion, after his conversion, did not end at only accepting that he had broken the law. He did not, he did not end at only acknowledging that all the good deeds were filthy in God's eyes if he had not changed. But we see that he even had to let go of his ambitions. So, had great ambitions. He wanted to be a very respected Jewish leader. Remember, he even went to the school of the Pharisees. And those were very respected men at that time. But he had to let go of all that. Because he now came to believe that nothing else mattered in his life but to live for Christ. Nothing else mattered but to work for Christ. Nothing else mattered but to obey the law as Christ intended it to be obeyed. He knew that being Jewish did not make him a Christian. He equally had to even admit that the Gentiles were equal to him before God. And when he became converted, he even went ahead to even preach to the Gentiles and show them love. But in the beginning, he did not want to share the love that God had for him with the Gentiles, but because of a changed heart, so knew that Christ came and died for everyone's sin, whether you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, whether you are tall or you are short, whether you are fat or you are thin, Christ died for all. And boys and girls, that is what is really important. Coming to church, knowing the scripture, attending every event that we have as young people does not guarantee you a place in heaven. You see, when you look at this paper that I have here, which is black, even if I get this pen and write on the paper, you are unable to see what I'm writing because I'm using a black pen to write on a blackboard. Even if I got a blue pen and wrote here, because it's so dark, you won't be able to see it. That is exactly how it is with our hearts. If you are not changed, if you are not converted by Christ, this is how your heart is. Even if somebody tells you you are proud, you will not see it. Even if somebody tells you you are stingy, your heart will not be convinced. Even if somebody tells you you are mean, you will not be convinced. Once you are converted by Christ, your heart is now changed to being this bright where you are able to see that you are a sinner. You are able to see that you are a sinner because the Holy Spirit will indwell in you and will be able to teach you right from wrong. 
So I urge you to take time, even after the lesson, sit down, reflect on your life. Think about what Christianity means to you. Is it only knowing the commandments? You have to have open hearts that when Christ speaks to you, when Christ intervenes in your life and wants to change your heart, your heart is ready for change. Dramatic as the story of so may be, we learn a very important lesson. That whether you are a bully, whether you are mean, whether you are a jealous person, when Christ works in your heart, he is able to change you into a person who is very obedient to God's law. And I want to tell you this. Sometimes when you see pastors preaching, when you see the elders teaching us the word of God, you may be convinced to say, maybe that is how they were born. No. Some of them had to even let go of the professions that they have to come and serve God. That is what happens when Christ changes somebody's heart. They realize that nothing more matters but to live a life for Christ. And I want to urge you, take time to pray so that God may open your heart, that when he intervenes in your heart to speak to you about changing your life, you are ready for that change. Thank you for listening and thank you for being here today. Let us pray to close the lesson. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we do come before you to thank you for today's lesson. We pray, Lord, that learning from the life of Saul, we see that you are able to convict anybody, that you are able to change the heart of anyone. Heavenly Father, being the way we are, sinners as we are born, we pray, O oh Lord, that let us not think that knowing the law is enough for us. May we continue calling upon your name that you may help us, that you may intervene in our lives and change us just the way you changed so. We ask this, Lord, through the name of Christ Jesus. Amen.